Hello, you're watching Armando Hasudungan, uh, biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasudungan, like, ask questions, answer questions, and please post some of your artworks if you have any. Uh, so today's video is going to talk, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the brain. And it's just going to be a brief introduction and an overview. Starting from the lateral view of the brain. And here we will look at the four major lobes in the brain. Um, and the first one, which is the frontal lobe, which is at the front of the brain, in our forehead. And this lobe is important for movement, coordination, and information. So basically, it is associated with problem solving, reasoning, and planning. And right behind the frontal lobe, on the top of our heads, if we drill a hole, is the parietal lobe. And the parietal lobe is important for uh, in sensory information. So receiving stimuli uh, and perception. And at the very back, we have the occipital lobe, which is important for our vision, vision processing, seeing. And on the sides, we have the temporal lobe, which is where our ears are located. Um, and it's important for hearing. And other important structures in this diagram are the cerebellum, pons, and medulla oblongata, which we will look into more closer uh, later on. But for now, let's look more closely at the four lobes and, and some associated areas. Just a brief overview. So here's a simplified diagram of the brain. Uh, now, the frontal lobe consists of many cortexes. Um, probably the very important one is what's called the primary motor cortex, which is located here. And the primary motor cortex is important in um, voluntary movements, so processing voluntary movements, like moving our hands, moving our legs. And also right next to the primary motor cortex, uh, still within the frontal lobe, is the motor-associated area. And they basically have a role in uh, voluntary movements. And these um, make up part of the frontal lobe. And right next to the primary motor cortex, we have another area called the somatosensory cortex, or the primary somatosensory cortex. Now, this area is important in receiving stimuli, somatic stimuli, such as touch, pain, and heat. And also right next to the primary somatic sensory cortex is a sensory associated area. And these make up part of the parietal lobe. And what separates the primary motor cortex and the primary somatic sensory cortex is a central um, uh, garus. Now at the very back we have the vision cortex and the vision associated area. And uh, these make up the occipital lobe for vision processing, what we see. And, and the last lobe is the um, temporal lobe, which is important for order, which consists of the auditory cortex and the auditory associated area uh, for processing our hearing. And now, if we drill a hole here or open this um, section up, underneath it we have areas associated with taste and smell, but we won't look into it now, but it's just uh, interesting to note. So now, if we cut this lateral view of the brain in half and see what's underneath it, so the medial section, this is what it would look like. Um, so this, we're cutting the lateral view of the brain in half. And now, I'll just go over the lobes again, to so we know where we are um, in this diagram. So we have the frontal lobe here. And around here is the right temporal lobe, because we just removed the left temporal lobe. So here's the right temporal lobe, important in our hearing. Uh, behind the frontal lobe is the parietal lobe, and at the very back of our brain is the occipital lobe. Now, the cerebellum, which I just mentioned previously, is actually important in movement, balance, coordination, so we don't fall down, basically. And then we have the pons and medulla oblongata, which I will discuss later on. Uh, but... Uh, what's important to know in this diagram is that there is a thalamus, and we'll just look into that more closer later on, and also the corpus callosum, which connects the two hemispheres, because there's two hemispheres in our brain. So if we have a closer look at this diagram, where the thalamus and corpus callosum is, we'll just go over some important structures. 
And this bit of the brain can be referred to as a diencephalon, which is important in regulating homeostatic conditions and keeping our body in equilibrium. Now, the corpus callosum, as I just mentioned, connects the two hemispheres together, and there's two hemispheres in the brain. The thalamus, which is located that round um, circle, it's important in the interaction center. It's, uh, it's an interaction center and relay station for somatic and sensory um, information. So basically, when we feel thing or when we feel something, um, in stimulation travels through our thalamus before going to the, to the cortexes, and also when we want to move, information goes through the thalamus before going to our hands. Now, right next to the thalamus is what's referred to as a pineal gland or epithalamus, and it secretes a hormone called melatonin. Above the thalamus, which actually wraps around the thalamus, is the fornix, and it's important in the limbic system. And around this area is also the hypothalamus, which is a major endocrine gland. And also underneath the thalamus, these two lobes, we have the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. Now, it's also a major endocrine um, gland. And hypothalamus and these pituitary glands are important in keeping our body in equilibrium, keeping homeostatic conditions. So let's go back to this big diagram and we'll look more closer um, to, uh, we'll have a closer look at the brainstem where the pons and the medulla oblongata is. And the brainstem works as a relay station receiving information from the rest of the body and sending out information to the spinal cord. And it also contains cranial nerves, which I'll make a video on um, next. But essentially, this is what the brainstem looks like. So it connects the brain, the actual brain, to the spinal cord and to the peripheral system. So starting from the very top, we have um, the thalamus. And as mentioned, the thalamus here uh, is is a relay station for sensory and motor information. So when we send out voluntary movement and receive stimuli, stimulation, etc., it travels through the thalamus before going to the associated areas for processing, you can say. Underneath the thalamus, we have the midbrain, which I have not discussed, but it, is, it has a role in actually our eyes, moving our eyes. And right underneath the pons is a medulla oblongata and the medulla oblongata you will hear a lot if you study anatomy and physiology and it's a control of um, involuntary movements but it has also other um, roles underneath this uh, medulla oblongata we have the spinal cord and as, as you know the spinal cord continues down and these protrusions here are the cranial nerves and there are 12 cranial cranial nerves we have 12 cranial, <laughs> cranial nerves and I'll talk Make a video about them later on. And here is the pons, the, above the medulla oblongata. And the pons works as a relay station between the cerebellum and the cerebrum. And the cerebellum, if you remember, is just behind the pons, if you see that on the diagram. And the pons also has another role, has a role in breathing, in our breathing. So let's look at a different system now, and this is going to be an overview of what's called the limbic system. And there are slight mistakes in this diagram, but I'll tell you where they are. So this is the limbic system. Actually, no, I don't think there's any mistakes in this diagram. But here's a cerebellum. And the corpus callosum, as mentioned, connects the two hemispheres together. The thalamus, a relay station. And we have the uh, pituitary glands, the endocrine glands. Above it is the hypothalamus. Going up, and this sec orange section here I will introduce later on, but it has an important role in emotions. Um, the lobes, we have the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, and the occipital lobe. Now this orange um, uh, um, sketch I just drew is what's called the cingulate gyrus. And this red um, line I'm drawing now is actually the fornix. And it, conne and it connects to the hippocampus, which is important for short-term memory. And another important structure which uh, is part of this fornix structure, you can say, which I'm drawing in blue now, is the amygdala. And the amygdala is important in emotion. So this red outline represents, I'll just say, the fornix, and it's important part, important part of the limbic system. So let's have a different um, view of this limbic system. And the limbic system, I will just say, is important in short-term memory, emotions, 
and behavior. That's what it's important for. Now this orange um, is the cingulate gyrus. It has a role in emotions. Underneath the cingulate gyrus we have the thalamus and there's two thalamuses for each hemisphere. And then this red, um, this red structure I'm drawing now is the fornix. And the fornix connects to the hippocampus and the hippocampus has a role in um, short-term memory and emotions. Short-term memory and learning. And right next to the hippocampus, which is not actually connected, these blue circles, I represent as the amygdala. And the amygdala, as mentioned, has a major role in emotions and memory. So when we, we are emotional, the amygdala will fire up when we're crying, when we're happy. And the amygdala also, also associates, because the amygdala and hippocampus are close together, um, amygdala and hippocampus associates emotion with memory. So past trauma if, uh, or happy uh, memories, it will, this will fire up and lighten up. So that was just a brief overview of the limbic system and the brain anatomy. And the limbic system, as mentioned, is for behavior, memory, and um, emotions. Next videos, I will look more closer at each system and the cortex and more deeply into the anatomy of the brain. Uh, but next, but for the actual next video about the neurology, I will look into the cranial nerves. So yeah, uh, please like, comment, and give feedback please. Thank you.